let us look at different types of inflation. First, low inflation. This is regular inflation. Inflation increases by just 1 or 2 percent over a long period of time. It is generally in single digits. Since it moves slowly, it is also called creeping inflation. Second type is galloping inflation or runaway inflation. If low inflation creeps on ground, galloping inflation jumps like this. Inflation rate is anywhere in between 50 to 700 percent in one year. Third category is hyperinflation. This is the worst type of inflation. Imagine you want to buy a jackfruit. You go to market, it's just 20 rupees. You bought it, came home and ate one full jackfruit. Later that night, hyperinflation starts in your country. Next day, you go and see the same jackfruit costs say 80 rupees now. Within another two days, it becomes 400 rupees per one fruit. By the end of that month, it's 50,000 rupees for one jackfruit. In few months, just a single jackfruit may cost as much as 5 or 10 lakh rupees. You don't have a choice. It's not just for jackfruit. Prices of all items shoot up like this. But you'll not be cashless. Chances are high that you'll also be a billionaire. Even by selling your old car, you can make several crores during hyperinflation. But that money will not have significant purchasing power. During hyperinflation, you will have to carry a truckload of cash to buy a handbag of weekly vegetables. With the illusion of solving this, central bank starts printing notes of higher denomination like 50 lakh rupees note, 5 crore rupees note or maybe even 100 crore rupees note. Hyperinflation is usually the result of central bank printing too much currencies than the economic activities of a country need. We saw its significance in our previous video. After First World War, Germany printed too much currencies to pay for war damages. That resulted in hyperinflation. Recently, hyperinflation occurred in Zimbabwe. In 2008, prices were doubling for every 24 hours. Zimbabwe's central bank responded by issuing currencies with larger denominations, such as $5 billion, $50 billion, $100 billion, and finally in January 2009, a note of $100 trillion were issued. Prices of goods were several billion times more than the previous year. This is very very bad for an economy. People resort to barter system or start using foreign currencies. Domestic currency loses both its value and significance. Let us understand the term skewflation. Prior to that, we need to know the difference between inflation and relative price increase. Inflation is one of the most misused term in economics. Relative price increase is not inflation. Assume that onions and tomatoes were in short supply. Prices of these items increased due to shortage. This is relative price increase. An episodic increase in price of one or small group of commodities. On the contrary, inflation is increase in prices of most of the goods over a sustained period of time. There is a third category which is a combination of these two. Imagine prices of one or small group of commodities increase over a sustained time period. One or small group of commodities from relative price increase and increase over a sustained time period from inflation. This third category is known as skewflation. It is relatively a new term and skewflation is common in India, especially for food prices. Let us study about Phillips curve and stagflation in our next video.